Hey guys, it's Sai here from Audio Plugin Deals, and uh, this one is for all you Logic Pro users. I'm going to be showing you some neat Logic Pro tips that will help you really improve your workflow. Let's get right into it. Keyboard shortcuts. This tip is super obvious, but far too often when I see people use Logic, I often think about just how much faster I could have achieved that task using keyboard shortcuts. For that reason, this tip is too crucial to not be mentioned. Here, I've created a short side-by-side -side comparison of me performing a series of tasks on Logic, both with keyboard shortcuts and without. I've done this to show you just how much time you can save if you know your shortcuts inside out. Find your most used functions, look for the keyboard shortcuts, learn them, and phase them into your workflow until you've memorized them. I've actually listed a few useful ones on the corresponding article that I wrote for the Audio Plugin Deals blog, link in the description. Some of the functions you use won't have their own keyboard shortcuts enabled by default, so this is a good opportunity to start assigning your own. If we go up the top to Logic Pro X and go key commands, edit, we will be able to locate any keyboard shortcut of our choosing. So if we wanted to set our snap automation mode 1 16th note um, to a key command for whatever reason, we can just hit the learn by key label button here and then press, our, press the desired keys on our keyboard, just like that. Likewise, if we have our own MIDI controller with assignable buttons, um, we can use the learn new assignment button down the bottom here. Easy as that. All right, look, we're all guilty of this. We often get carried away with the creative side of things, and as a result, we let our project organization just fall apart. Things like renaming and color coding each track or region can become really painful and really time consuming. However, Logic has some really useful shortcuts to help us save time with project organization. If we select all our regions and then open the functions menu at the top of our main window, we find some really handy shortcuts. If we find that our region names are all over the place, we can select the uh, name regions by track name shortcut up the top, and boom, all our regions now conform to our track names. Likewise, if our color coding is entirely scuffed, like I have here, uh, we have a color regions by track color shortcut. That's already looking a lot better. We can also color or name the tracks by the region name and region color, um, and that's also super useful. Note that all these functions have their own keyboard shortcuts, so I highly recommend memorizing these. On the subject of keyboard shortcuts, we can also use Shift Enter to rename our track quickly, as well as Shift N to rename any regions. All right, so this particular feature was something I was unaware of for the longest time. Here I have a simple drone and melody thing going on that I quickly sketch it up. And that sounds fine when I play it from the start. When I play it from the middle, we don't hear the drone anymore because by default, Logic disregards the notes that your play here is already on, and it only plays the ones afterwards. This is fine for the most part, but when you have long notes that span multiple bars, like this one, uh, it can get really annoying. So we can remedy this by enabling something called MIDI Chase. If we go to File, Project Settings, and MIDI, and then open the Chase tab, we can hit the Notes uh, tick box here. And now, when you play our thing from the middle, No matter where we play it from, Logic treats the play head position as the start of each note. MIDI Chase also gives us the option to uh, have this functionality over sustained notes, but I have a lot of sustained pedal automation in my work, and that can get messy really quickly, so I like to leave this off.
Let's say that you're working on a piece and you hit play and improvise something and it sounds really cool. Only problem is, you weren't recording. That's okay, just hit Shift R and it'll render what you've just played as a MIDI region. The trouble is, this doesn't record automation, so you will have to use latch mode and record it separately. But. At least the notes are still there. Right, this is by far the largest of my workflow solutions that Logic has to offer. It takes the most time to set up, but I find that it's the most rewarding. I'm constantly astounded at the number of people who just open up an empty Logic project template and then do everything from there. What you can do instead is create your own custom template. The template doesn't have to be a comprehensive selection of every single virtual instrument patch you use. I'm talking about a real basic template that you can easily start creating music from. Here you can set up all your reverb buses, workflow windows, project settings, and in doing so you'll be saving yourself so much time. In fact, to wrap up the video, this is exactly what I'm going to be walking you through. So let's start right from scratch, beginning with Logic's empty project template. Set up all your basic project settings first, you know, MIDI chase, audio settings, metronome settings, and so on. This vastly depends on personal preference, so I won't go into too much detail. Um, but I do want to make sure that MIDI Chase has been enabled. Um, yeah, yes it has. So we'll take that and then um, and then we can take the opportunity to set up the information we want displayed on the transport uh, display up here. Uh, there's nothing here that I really want to change, though I do want to uncheck the locators thing just to display a little less information on my um, transport. Now we'll set up a few tracks with some blank plugin instances which let me access my favourite sample libraries. The two main plugins that I use are Contact and East West's Play, but instead of just having a pair of these blank instances and leaving it there, I like to set up a pair of, a pair of instances for each instrument category, so brass, percussion, etc. I also want to set up my most used synth libraries. That's looking pretty good. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and configure my track header settings. Uh, let's see, okay, so I want protect, I want freeze, uh, I want all these default ones, and I also want my track color bars to be visible, which will be useful for color coding later on. Um, I don't like track icons, they're pretty ugly and really annoying to constantly set up, so I'm just going to disable those. Uh, and then I'm going to do keep track alternatives on as well. Um, if we want to save these as a default, we can just hit store as user defaults down here. And if at any time we want to revert to our factory defaults, we have the option to do so here. Right, now I'm going to go ahead and color code everything. Cool, that's looking really nice so far. Finally, let's take this opportunity to set up our, re uh, our effect buses. I only really use reverb in my workflow, so I tend to set that up on a bus track and then link all my tracks to that reverb bus. Cool, now that that's done, uh, I will mention that it is worth turning off these sends until you use them, just to save a bit of processing power. Blam. Right, so our template's looking pretty good so far. The last thing that I want to do is uh, set up our workspace. Now I take advantage of Logic's screen sets feature quite a lot, 
Screen sets are basically snapshots of your preferred workspace layout. They can be created by simply hitting a number on your keyboard. And that will create a new screen set, the number of which will be visible up here. Um, and we can switch between them like this, or simply by hitting the number keys on our keyboard. Um, each screen set, we can have a new window layout. So in this one, I might have um, my main window off to the side, hide the inspector, and then open up the piano roll editor and snap it to this half. Um, and that could be my MIDI editing window. Um, and then for screen set three, I could have a similar setup, but for score editing, uh, like so. So it really boils down to personal preference. Um, you know, you could have a mixing window on screen set four, which is just, you know, your mixing desk, or maybe, maybe something like that. Um, or even, in fact, you can just have this open in your main window like that. Um, yeah, again, boils down to personal preference. This bit's entirely up to you, but it's super helpful having these screen sets open. Finally, when we're done with our template, we can just go File, Save As Template, and then save it in the Project Templates folder. Now, when you go to open a new project, we can go to My Templates, and it will appear in in our project templates. So that's it for this video. I hope you found these tips useful and I hope they significantly speed up your workflow. Make sure to leave a comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.